Ken Wilton. I'm the CEO of First Mining Gold, uh, ticker symbol FF on the TSX. And uh, thank you very much for coming to join us for the presentation. It's just amazing to actually be in a room with people again and being able to shake hands and see a few friendly faces. And, uh, and uh, lots going on since the last time we stood in front of crowds and talked about First Mining. So uh, we'll dive into it. I'm going to make a couple of uh, forward-looking statements here. Uh, first Mining, uh, first and foremost, primarily project developer with a, a portfolio of projects all in Canada. Uh, a flagship project that we're moving forward is the Spring Pole Gold Project located about 100 kilometers east of Red Lake, Ontario. We'll talk about that. Spring Pole is an advanced stage 5 million ounce project that's going through environmental assessment. Uh, really one of the biggest projects of its, uh, of its generation here in, uh, in Canada. Um, on top of that, we have a couple other projects that we're moving forward ourselves, including the Cameron Project, which is located about 80 kilometers north of Rainy River in that same area of northwestern Ontario. So Cameron is a project we've consolidated, uh, some very interesting work that our exploration team is, uh, is starting to uncover by compiling a bunch of old data that we have at Cameron. We never talk about it much, but it's something you're going to hear more uh, about from us. And on top of that, we have a portfolio of other projects that we've found partners for over the last couple of years, really to give us the runway to be able to advance our other projects. So that's the Pickle Crow, which is now a two million ounce Jork resource. Um, and it's being advanced by our partner, uh, Oteco Minerals. Um, they've spent $20 million on it so far in the last couple of years, drilled 120,000 meters and uh, doubled the size of the resource. It's a very exciting program there. We've got the Hope Brook project, which has been optioned to Big Ridge Gold. They're spending $20 million to earn into 80% in a very prolific area of, uh, on the south coast of Newfoundland. Uh, and we have, uh, we're the largest shareholder of Treasury Metals, which we sold our Gold Lund project to. They had the Goliath project next door. And uh, those two projects are now being advanced as one integrated development uh, being advanced towards pre-feasibility study, which should come out by the end of the summer. So on top of that, portfolio of 21 royalties across four different countries. As we've done these partnership deals, we've held on to royalties, which I think, you know, we're not getting a lot of value for right now, but we think it's a lot of really exciting upside opportunity for us. Um, said most of what's on this uh, what's on this page. Just a couple of other uh, things that we'll <laughs> highlight here. We are we'll talk about this. We're trading at a deep discount to our peers on a fundamental value basis, and uh, you know, importantly, we've added to and and built a, an experienced team that really is able of uh, able to unlock value in a couple of different trajectories for us. One of which on the development side and the permitting side, uh, and now on the geology and exploration side. So we're very, very excited about that. Um, just high level here, a little more than 700 million shares outstanding, uh, market cap of about $180 million uh, Canadian. And importantly, when you look at that, uh, making up that market cap, we have about $120 million of cash, marketable securities, um, you know, other uh, payments that are due to us in the, in the option deals that we have, and then the value of these other partnership projects. So right now you're getting the value of Spring Pole, which again, one of the biggest undeveloped gold mines in Canada, um, you know, 1.3 billion Canadian after-tax NPV at a $1,600 gold price. You're getting our Cameron project, the assets we have in Quebec, and a 21 royalty, royalty portfolio for the sum total of about 60 million in our market cap today, probably less today if we did the numbers. So great value to be looking at uh, uh, real upside opportunity. You know, I think it's a, it's a pretty straight shot for our strategy of how we surface value here, moving uh, Spring Pole through the uh, development and through the permitting process, unlocking value of the district around Spring Pole, which we've doubled the size of the land package, and uh, Spring Pole is now, you know, I think we've, we've captured what we think are most of the important targets in this Bertucci Greenstone Belt, and uh, really starting a generative exploration program around that to demonstrate that the five million ounces at Spring Pole really is the starting point, not the end point. So uh, just conscious of time here, you know, we, uh, we're very cheap by all metrics here. Again, you know, projects, advanced stage projects will tend to trade up around $100 an ounce. We're trading a lot closer to 10 today. So that kind of return opportunity at Spring Pole. 
So it's a quick little picture of spring pole. This is what the terrain looks like. Um, you know, importantly, you can see here how we've added to the land package at Spring Pole, uh, really with most of this, uh, this western part of the, uh, of the Bertucci Greenstone Belt. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, the development plan at Spring Pole, the project sits, the deposit sits under the shallow bay of a lake, and the development plan involves building uh, a couple of dikes, open pit mining, um, and then at the end of that uh, project life, Basically, the pit fills up, you remove the dikes, and on your net footprint basis, this is one of the smallest development projects, uh, really one of the smallest development uh, projects of its size and scale from a footprint perspective in Canada. Just interestingly to see it there, you know, at the end of it, you're kind of left with uh, the lake, much like it was before, some improved fish habitat, and then a hill, which is our uh, waste and, uh, and tailings co-disposal facility. So the location here, you can see it again, uh, about 100 kilometers east of Red Lake, Ontario. This is mostly forested country. We have roads within 18 kilometers of the project. We have 230 kV power line that's been built within 100 kilometers of the project in the last two years. Great infrastructure. This is a real mining country, right? This sits halfway between the mining camps of Red Lake and Pickle Lake. So a place where people uh, in the communities around us are very familiar with mining. Um, a very, again, very unique strategic project, right? What it comes down to, how many projects are there that can produce 300,000 ounces a year with a five million ounce resource in a tier one jurisdiction with all in sustaining costs in the lowest quartile that you can build for less than a billion dollars. Look around the gold industry uh, and screen all of the projects for those criteria, you come up with like two projects. This is a globally significant and I think strategic resource for the gold sector. So, uh, very robust economics, um, but again, at a $1,600 gold price, what we like to point to here in terms of the leverage, uh, you know, pre-tax NPV, about a billion and a half US, after tax, just shy of a billion dollars, but uh, with every $100 of the gold price, it's about $150 million of after tax NPV at Spring Pool. So today that would be 1.3 billion at about an $1,800 gold price. Now there's gonna be some capital cost inflation. We're all experiencing this in the industry, but I think what that's gonna come down to is, uh, you know, where's the gold price gonna be when you get to be making a construction decision and how much of that inflation is offset? How much margin are you able to continue to capture? This is a very high margin gold project and it's a high margin project largely because uh, of the deposit itself, and that this isn't a series of veins that you're trying to open pit mine. This is a big blob of mineralization that you can mine really cost effectively, very efficiently with like a two to one strip ratio, which is important for economics, but it's really important when you start looking at the greenhouse gas footprint of your open pit mining project. Because every time you hear strip ratio, strip ratio is greenhouse gas footprint. So. Um, again, this will be one of, the, uh, one of the largest projects vying for a top 10 producer in Canada, in some years vying for a top three producer in Canada. So globally significant. And I'm just running out of time here, but importantly, I think for things to watch, uh, we're embarking on what is a real district scale exploration in this Bertucci uh, Greenstone Belt, which is dramatically underexplored relative to Red Lake, which is 100 kilometers away, and just on the other side of this, uh, of this intrusive here. So uh, our team's very excited, uh, and you know, starting, I think, the first really significant field exploration we've seen at Spring Pole in 10 years, and lots to come on that front. Uh, we know there's a lot of gold in the area because we've seen all kinds of uh, all kinds of um, historic production and you know high grade in the area, lots of different examples. So with that, uh, I will say thank you. There's so much more that we can, uh, that we can talk about. Uh, I know we're just about done the show, but you can reach us uh, anytime on our, uh, uh, through our website, www.firstmininggold.com or uh, into, uh, into our investor relations line, info at firstmininggold.com. Thanks very much.